Thermal energy is one of the primary forms of energy supporting life and the climate on Earth. Thermal energy describes the internal energy of motion at the level of individual atoms. It is related to temperature, but as we will see later, there are situations in which the thermal energy of an object can change without a changing temperature. It is energy associated with the motion, with motion, making it kinetic energy. And since it's energy at the molecular level, it is referred to as kinetic molecular energy. There are some assumptions we make about matter that help when discussing kinetic molecular energy. These are, all matter is made up of small particles called atoms. These particles are widely separated in space. These small particles are always in motion. And this motion is kinetic energy. And finally, when these small particles collide, they can exchange energy. This makes it possible to transfer kinetic energy from one object to another. The fact that molecules can move can be demonstrated with a perfume bottle. Imagine taking a bottle of perfume into the corner of a room and spraying some on a wall. Over time, everyone in the room would be able to smell it. The people closest to the place it was sprayed would smell it first, but eventually the odor would spread throughout the room. The odor spreads through the room due to diffusion. It is due to the internal kinetic energy, in other words, the motion of molecules of perfume moving around the room. We can change the rate of diffusion by changing the thermal energy of the system. The warmer the room, the faster the perfume molecules will spread from one side of the room to the other. Matter can exist in three phases, solids, liquids, and gases. Type of molecular motion that occurs depends on which of these phases material is in. In, solid at in solids, atoms are locked in place and the motion is limited to vibration. Solids have a fixed volume and a fixed shape. Note that even in solid material, the individual atoms are separated by space. As the internal molecular energy of a material increases, it can change phase into a liquid. In liquid, the molecules are still relatively closely associated with each other, but the individual molecules are not locked in place, making it possible for them to slide past each other. Molecules in liquid phase have the same vibrational motion that solids have, plus independent motion of individual molecules. Liquids still have a fixed volume, but due to the ability of the molecules to slip past each other, liquids can change shape. Further increase in the thermal energy allows molecules to enter the gas phase. In gas phase, molecules are separated by a lot of space. They move completely independently of each other, and their speed is much greater than it is in liquids. Gases have neither a fixed volume nor a fixed shape. There's more internal kinetic energy associated with the molecules in a substance as it transitions from solid to liquid and from liquid to gas. So how do we perceive this motion? We've already discussed one way, perfume diffusing through a room, but we can also think about this motion in terms of pressure and temperature. Consider a balloon filled with air. The way a balloon is inflated is by filling it up with a gas and sealing that gas inside. A balloon stays inflated due to the motion of the gas molecules inside hitting the walls of the balloon. This is something we have some intuitive sense of because there are real world systems that behave similarly. The molecules of gas act kind of like balls bouncing around on a pool table. But in the case of molecules in a balloon, we're talking about many, many extremely small particles moving really fast. A typical birthday balloon could contain as many as five times 10 to the 22 molecules of air. Each of these molecules could be moving at around 500 meters per second which is over a thousand miles an hour. With so many molecules moving so fast, they bump into each other and into the walls of the balloon billions of times a second. The mass of each molecule is small, so there's very little force associated with each individual collision, but the sheer number of collisions creates the pressure that pushes the balloon walls away from each other. To get a better sense of the role of internal kinetic energy in keeping the balloon inflated, we can ask how might we increase the volume of the balloon? One way, would be to simply add more molecules. With everything else being the same, more molecules will result in more collisions, increasing the force pushing the walls of the balloon apart, resulting in the balloon increasing in volume. But we can also increase the kinetic energy of the molecules by making the individual molecules move faster. Causing them to move faster will increase the number of collisions, further increasing the volume of the balloon. The motion of the molecules is what we describe as temperature, we can even define temperature in terms of this motion. This, this definition is that temperature is the average kinetic energy of the molecules in a substance. 
If we were to set up a chart showing velocity on the x-axis and the number of particles on the y-axis, a graph of the molecules of air in a room may look something like this, with a few particles moving very slowly and a few moving very quickly, but the bulk of them moving at about 500 meters per second. If we were to increase the kinetic energy of the molecules in this room, the whole graph would shift to the right as the increased energy expressed itself as increase in the average kinetic energy of the molecules. This increase in the internal kinetic energy results in an increase in temperature. Likewise, if we were to do something to slow down the molecules, reducing the kinetic energy, this lowering of the average kinetic energy of the molecules and the gas in the room results in a decrease in temperature. The word average in this definition is important. As was mentioned before, molecules in an object are not all moving exactly the same speed. At all of these temperatures, there are molecules moving at different speeds. The change in temperature results from a change in the average speed of the entire group of molecules. In the balloon example, we described a gas. And while gases change volume with temperature more than other phases, solids and liquids also change volume with changes in temperature. Measuring volume change with change in internal kinetic energy is one way we measure temperature. The common alcohol thermometer is de designed in such a way that the very small changes in volume driven by changes in temperature force the red liquid up and down a glass tube showing temperature changes. And while solids change in volume with temperature less than liquids do, there are solid thermometers. If you look closely at the center of a typical dial thermometer, you will see a small metal coil. This thermometer works through the expansion and contraction of the metal in this coil. The way we're able to get enough motion to register change in temperature here is by bonding two types of metal together. These two types of metal have slightly different rates of volume change with temperature. On their own, neither metal expands or contracts enough to work as a thermometer, but by bonding them together, their differences in response to temperature force the coil to change shape enough to register changes in temperature. We use a few different units for temperature. The two most common ones are Celsius and Fahrenheit. These are standard units, meaning they are not derived from any other units. An important thing to realize is that they are completely arbitrary. Celsius is the commonly used metric unit, and there is no fundamental reason that zero Celsius is set to any particular internal kinetic energy, except that someone felt it made sense to make zero the freezing point of water and to make the boiling point 100 degrees higher than that. This scale is useful for us, but, make it, but makes no sense anywhere other than the surface of the Earth. Water doesn't necessarily freeze or boil at these temperatures anywhere else. The other common scale is Fahrenheit, where water freezes at 32 degrees and boils at 212. There is another important scale. This is the Kelvin scale. The Kelvin scale is the formal metric scale for temperature. Kelvin differs from the other two in that it is not an arbitrary scale. It is an absolute scale. Zero on this scale has meaning. Zero Kelvin is the point of minimal internal kinetic energy. At zero Kelvin, objects have no internal kinetic energy and therefore no molecular motion. The fact that this is not an arbitrary scale is indicated by the fact that we do not use the label degrees when discussing temperatures on this scale. Objects can contain different forms of energy at the same time. This ball has both internal and external kinetic energy. The external kinetic energy is the movement of the ball towards the target. The internal kinetic energy is its temperature. By throwing the ball harder, we can increase its external kinetic energy without changing its internal kinetic energy. Alternatively, we can warm the ball, increasing its internal kinetic energy without adding anything to its external kinetic energy. Different types of energy can interact. External kinetic energy can increase internal kinetic energy via friction, air resistance, or other contact forces.